What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC update to bring all of you this evening. So what we're going to be covering in this update is again, a brief end of day or tech short interest in utilization update to give us a better understanding of where we are at in terms of this short squeeze play heading into tomorrow's trading day. And again, we talked about this or data in today's previous video, but we reached another all time high. You know what that tells us? One, the shorts have not covered their position that is a given the second they are still adding to their position continually making this problem for themselves even worse once this situation plays out so in my mind we are in the best position possible because guess what it costs us nothing to hold our positions we don't have to pay any borrow fee rates we don't have to put up any margin we have the simplest strategy that there is and honestly we are winning if you take a look at the price action on amc over the last six to 12 months, honestly, the last year, uh, as we can see right here, we are up a gargantuan amount. So again, we have been beating the so-called smart money, and I still think we have a lot of great things ahead of us. So what we're going to be covering in this update is we have this very interesting article about the SEC that we need to cover. Gary Gensler has made some pretty interesting comments in the past, and with this GameStop report coming out in the near future, I have some things I really want to talk about regarding the SEC's involvement in what we have been dealing with over the last year, and honestly, what's been going on in the market for decades. Now, one of the most important and interesting things that I came across today is that two of some of the largest hedge funds have been liquidating a significant portion of their assets. Why might it they be doing this what might they be preparing for that is going to be some things that we are going to cover towards the end of this video so if you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that i provide for you in this update make sure you guys go down and hit that like button it costs you nothing to do it but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn and if you guys want to see more videos like this make sure you hit that subscribe button so today amc closed 36.83 down 0.62 percent 23 cents down a little bit in the after hours but again we typically see nothing much happen in amc in the after hours trading period as of recently now when we come over to this ortex data right here let's just give this a little bit of a quick refresh to see if anything has changed 85.71 percent utilization relatively low in terms of what we've seen out of amc in the past and it has dropped over the last week all with the estimated short interest going up we are now seeing amc short interest at an all-time high of 21.17 percent and if you guys remember what we briefly touched on in today's previous video we were talking about the fact that the last time that we saw a significant run-up on amc the short interest was a lot lower they covered some of their shorts in terms of the reported data but again they have really made this problem a lot worse for themselves because we are at a higher price with much higher short interest. Now, when we come over to this SEC article right here, SEC's Gensler aims to save investors money by squeezing Wall Street. This is an interesting choice of words that we see Wall Street Journal use, but we can see that the Securities and Exchange Commission Gary Gensler is working on tougher rules for high-speed trading firms, private equity managers, mutual funds, and online brokerages. Mr. Gensler, less than six months on the job says he wants to make the capital markets less costly for companies yada 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 now I know a lot of people are really disappointed out of what we haven't seen out of the SEC so far, but that's not really a good way to look at things, in my opinion. These types of investigations are going to take a lot of time to play out, and in my opinion, the SEC getting involved in this short squeeze situation really isn't what we want, and it's not really going to do anything. In my mind, what the SEC is really going to come in and do is basically crack down on all of these bad actors that have let this situation happen happen after it is played out and make sure that nothing like this can ever happen again. But what we do need to think about is the regulation of payment for order flow. So under an, or an arrangement known as payment for order flow, brokerage such as Robinhood Markets may send client orders to high-speed trading firms such as Citadel Securities or Virtue Financial rather than to a stock exchange. This is one of the things that we need to see addressed in this GameStop report that we already kind of know is coming. We don't have a date for it yet 
yet. But this is something that a lot of people are looking towards. The gamification of trading, payment for order flow, market maker concentration, exchange pricing, clearing houses and settlement times. And in my opinion, this is probably the most important thing right here, short selling disclosures. The way we have things set up right now, the shorts don't have to report their data. So I know a lot of people really want the SEC to do something. And the fact that they haven't already and really made a significant difference, a lot of people are very angry at them. But here is what I would like you to think about. This situation that we have with the SEC and GameStop and AMC is very similar to you going out to dinner and you order your food and then you start to say, the chef isn't cooking my food and the food is awful. Well, you haven't even seen if the chef is cooking your food and you haven't even gotten it yet. So you don't even really have a way to get an educated opinion on how good or not good that food is going to be once you receive it. That is the same thing that we are seeing here. Once we end up seeing what the SEC puts out, that is then when we can kind of form an opinion on what they are going to be doing going forward and if it is going to benefit us. And if it is not going to benefit us, the retail and ape movement right now is really going to force their hand, in my opinion. Once we see these situations play out, it is going to be relatively impossible for them with all of the noise that we have made on social media talking about these situations like short selling disclosures, clearing houses and settlement times, payment for order flow, market maker concentration. It's going to be very difficult for them to avoid these types of, of basically issues in any type of regulation that they are going to put out. Now, let's get into this hedge fund situation. So, Coming over here, George Soros, very famous investor and very controversial individual, is cashing out of stocks, putting some capital into cryptocurrencies. So we can see here, take Bruce Flat, CEO of Brookfield Asset Management, who runs $626 billion in the, t t uh, the Toronto-based asset manager, and who said now is a good time to be liquidating assets. There is significant money out in the markets today, so it's been a very good time for realizations, meaning selling off of positions in both infrastructure, renewables, private equity, and real estate. And we've been realizing a lot of assets. And we've been realizing a, a lot of assets. Sorry, they repeated this right here. We've sold $13 billion in the first quarter, $10 billion in the second quarter, and will continue this year. It is a very good time to be liquefying assets. And we see the same thing coming down here. Don Fitzpatrick, Chief Investment Officer of $27 billion Soros Fund Management Family Office which manages the personal capital of the prominent liberal billionaire and Democratic donor. Speaking to Bloomberg's Eric Schatzer, uh, she said that after putting $5 billion to work in March 2020 amid the market turmoil caused by the pandemic, she has rebuilt the firm's cash buffer, meaning she is selling off a significant portion of their position. Now, what this would suggest to us is, one, the leverage levels at these firms is getting too much for them. It is possible that they have received margin calls on their down positions, but right now, with everything that's going on in the global economy, it is more likely that they see a lot of risk that they do not want to be a part of, and they want to have some cash on the sidelines in order to buy these dips. Now, again, when we come over to this margin debt chart right here, as we come down a little bit further, we can see that the margin debt in the United States right now is at an all-time high. Now, going off of these global economic moves, we did receive towards the end of the day today an update on the debt ceiling situation, which we briefly talked about in today's earlier video, but this is the update right here. Democrats expected to postpone procedural debt ceiling vote to review McConnell's proposal. Now, there has been a lot of back and forth between the Democrats and Republicans over the last three weeks surrounding this debt ceiling issue. If they are not able to essentially kick this can down the road, the United States would default on their outside standing debt and we would see potentially one of the largest market crashes in history. But it is very unlikely that that would happen because we have seen a track record of these exact things happening in the past. There was a lot of political jockeying where they try to score political points. And then when it comes down to crunch time, they end up just kicking the can down the road and raising the debt ceiling. Now, there was also this piece right here that I found absolutely hilarious, the trillion dollar platinum coin that could be minted at the last minute. So essentially, the government is going to be printing uh, an additional trillion dollars to avoid this debt ceiling problem 
honestly, this could have been a, mo- uh, been a move on one of the party sides to essentially say that this was going to come out and then force the other side's hand, meaning get Mitch McConnell to the table because honestly, he does not want a lot of money being printed right now because we've printed so much over the last year. So basically what we're seeing at the current time is one short interest on AMC sky high. We are seeing Gary Gensler coming in and potentially regulating. We're going to have to wait and see what happens. And I think that is really the mindset that a lot of people need to have. Nothing's really come out yet, so you can't really judge him based on what he has or has not done yet. There's a lot of things that could come out that would be really good, a ban for payment for order flow in the works. We could see a potential breakup of those big market makers, which I think would be less likely, but always possible. And we also have some very large funds liquidating a significant portion of their position. So that is going to be something that we have to keep an eye on going forward. But that is going to wrap up this update on AMC. If you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks, learn about a couple of new ones, and see exactly which options I'm trading and which strategies I am using to trade them. So I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.